we're going to play around with integers and the number line. Let's look at some distances and numbers on the number line. If I ask you to start at zero and go up by three steps, where do you end up? One, two, three, you end up over here, three, which is the number three on the number line. So starting at zero and walking up three steps ends you up at number three on the number line. If you start at zero and walk down two steps, you end up over here, and that is negative two on the number line. So if you started at zero and you went up four steps, you'd end up at four on the number line. If you started at zero and went down five steps, you would end up over here at negative five on the number line. If you start at two on the number line, and go down two steps, you'll end up at zero. If you start at negative three on the number line and go up three steps, you'll end at zero. So how far is it from three to minus two? Well, we can go and count one, two, three, four, five steps, but also we could be a bit smarter and say, look at what we've been using already up until now and see that from 3 to 0, that's 3 steps. And from 0 to negative 2, that's 2 steps. And so in total, it is 5 steps from 3 to negative 2 on the number line. Try this one for yourself. How far is it from 4 to negative 3? Pause the video and try it yourself. OK. So 4 would be about here on the number line. And negative 3, negatives are below the 0, negative 3 would be around there. And then we can straight away use the idea that from 4 down to 0 is 4 steps. And from 0 down to negative 3 is 3 steps. So we've gone four steps and three steps, and so in total we have gone seven steps. The question now can be used for much bigger numbers. So how many steps are there from negative 22 to 31? Well, 31, I mean, now this number line has got no markings on it, so I'm just going to make a sort of say, okay, look, if, you know, 31 definitely has to be above the zero, right? And it's over there. And if I put that over there, negative 22, well, that's got to be below the zero and not quite as far below as that 31 is. So it'll be as the 31 is above. So negative 22 will be around there. But the idea I can use is the same one I've used before, which is that where is 31? It's 31 steps above the zero. And where is 22? Negative 22. Negative 22 is 22 steps below the zero. So to go from negative 22 up to 31, we can do 22 steps to get to zero and then 31 steps to get to 31. And so in total, we've got 22 plus 31 steps, which is going to be 53 steps. We're going to work on adding and subtracting using the number line. We're going to start with a calculation that you probably did way back when in grade one, but we're going to use it to remind ourselves of the steps. So what we need to do when we do need to do a calculation like five, subtract three, we need to see that we're going to start at five. Then we need to know, are we going to go up or down on the number line? If it's subtraction, we'll go down. If it's addition, we're going to be adding, so we'll go up. And then we need to know how many steps we go up or down. And in this case, it'll be down three steps. Let's have a look. We establish our starting point of five, that we're going to go down, and then we start going down our three steps. And we end off at two. So five, subtract three, 
gives us 2. OK, let's have a look at another calculation, 2 subtract 8. Again, we're going to go through the steps of uh, where do we start, are we going up or down, depending on additional subtraction, and how many steps. But we don't want to do our eight steps individually. And as we've discussed in the past, instead of going through the eight steps individually, we're going to do a jump to zero um, so that we do the steps in a slightly more efficient way. Let's have a look at how it works. To subtract eight, we start at two, subtract, so we're going down, and we need to go eight steps down. That's two steps to zero, and we need to go six more steps to make it eight steps in total. And so we end at negative 6. So 2 subtract 8 is negative 6. What about negative 2 subtract 3? Well, we'll start at negative 2. And we've got to go down. And we've got to go down 3 steps. And that will end us at negative 5. So negative 2 subtract 3 gives us negative 5. What about negative 7? plus 3. Well, start point is negative 7, but this time because it's a plus, we're going up, and it's 3 steps up, which will end us at negative 4. Now how about negative 5 plus 9? Well, in this case, we start at negative 5, and we need to go up because we're adding, and we need to go up 9 steps, we're going to jump five steps to zero. We've got to do four more steps because we want to do nine steps in total. And so we will end up at four. We're going to continue thinking about addition and subtraction on the number line. But in this case, we're going to have to fill in the missing number. So let's start by looking at this calculation here. We're being asked negative five plus what? will get us to 3. So if we think through the process, they're telling us the starting point is negative 5. They're telling us that we are adding, and we know that where we want to end up is we want to end up there at 3. So how many steps do we need to go to get from negative 5 all the way to 3? Well, to get from negative 5 to 0 is 5 steps, and then to get to 3 is another 3 steps. So in total, we have gone 8 steps to get from negative 5 to 3. OK, let's have a look at this one. I'd like you to try that one on your own first, and then we'll go over it together. OK, so... Our starting point for this one is 4, and we know we're going down because we're subtracting. And we know we want to end up at negative 2. So how far have we gone down? Well, we went 4 down to get to 0, and 2 more down to get to negative 2. So in total, we've gone 6 down. So 4 subtract 6 gives me negative 2. Let's have a look at these ones. Slightly more difficult because we're not even giving you the starting point this time, but we can figure it out. If we have a look at this one here, we don't know the starting point. We've started somewhere, added 4, and ended up at 3. So let's mark on where we've ended up. We've ended up at 3. We were going up from somewhere, and we were going up 4 steps. So from somewhere, we went up four steps and ended up at three. Well, if we want to know where that somewhere is, all we can do is go back down four steps and we'll see where we started. So let's go back down four steps. So that is three steps and one more step. That's four steps. So I must have started at negative one. OK, try this one for yourself. And then we will go over it. All right, so you knew that your ending point needed to be at negative 2. And you've come down six steps to end up at negative 2. So somehow you've started somewhere and you've come down six steps to end at negative 2. If we want to find out where you started, 
we have to go back up the six steps to see where you started. So let's go back up the six steps. That's two steps to zero and four more steps to make six steps in total. So we must have started at four, come down six steps to end up at negative two. We're going to just play around a bit with seeing where a calculation is likely to end up as a positive or negative answer. And this is going to be a practice we want to get into because before we actually go and do all the calculations involving numbers, let's actually just see if we can figure out whether we're going to end up with a positive or negative as the answer. Let's look at a calculation like 653 subtract 789. Now I don't want you to do the calculation, we just want to say is it positive or negative. So 653, say we stay, that's over there on the number line. And now what we want to do is we want to subtract, so go down, 789. Well, if we went down 653, we'd end at zero. But we don't only want to go down 653, we want to go down 789, which is going down even more than 653, so we'll definitely end up in the negative. In contrast, I hope it's quite easy for you to see, if say we did something like uh, this one, what we would be doing is starting at 653 and only going down 282 steps, which is just a small amount, and so we'd end up being positive. Okay, try these two for yourself. I don't want the answer just for you to tell me whether your answer will be positive or negative. Pause the video and try now. So hopefully for the first one, you saw that if you were at negative 354 and you needed to go up by 509 steps, well, going up by 354 steps would get you to zero. So you go if you're going up by 509, you're going up even further. So you will end up in the positives. On the other hand, if you're at negative 354 and you subtract, it means you're going to go down. And if you're going down a further 509, well, anywhere where you go down from negative 354, you're going to still stay in the negatives. And so this answer will be negative. Over the next few videos, we're going to look at how we can use patterns that we observe to help us do some of our calculations with negative numbers more easily. To start, I'm going to take you back to grade one. What's two plus three? Okay, I'm sure you immediately know the answer is five, but let's look at how that happens because this is part of the pattern I want you to see. So the starting point is two, we're adding, so we're going up and we're going up by three steps and we'll end at five. Now, what about negative two, subtract three? Here, we start at negative 2, but because we're subtracting, we're going down, and we're going down by 3 steps, and so we will end up at negative 5. Now, can you see what has happened here in the negatives is really kind of a mirror image of what's happening in the positives. So what we're seeing is that negative 2 subtract 3 is really just the same as what's happening with 2 plus 3, except it's happening in the negatives. And so, if we see negative 2 subtract 3, we know we're at negative 2 going down, it's going to have the same effect as being at 2 going up, but it is in the negatives. So how does that help me? Well, I'm very good at doing addition because I've been doing it since primary school. So I'm going to use that instead of the subtraction. So if I'm faced with a problem like this one, negative 14 subtract 23, I know that that means I must start at negative 14 and I must go down 23 steps. But I know that that's just going to be 
the mirror image of starting at 14 and going up 23 steps. So I know that this thing is going to give me the same answer as if I start at 14 and go up 23 steps, except obviously it's going to be negative. And 14 plus 23 is very easy. That's 37. And so here I know my answer will be negative 37. In this video, we continue looking at patterns that will help us to do our addition and subtraction with negative numbers more easily. OK, I'm going to start you back in grade one. What is 5 subtract 3? I hope that none of you struggled to immediately get the answer of 2. But now what would happen if I asked you to do 3 subtract 5? Well, let's just think about this first. If I do 3 subtract 5, firstly, am I going to end up with a positive or negative answer? Hopefully, immediately you knew that you are definitely going to end up with a negative answer. Now let's have a look at how we'd actually do this if we can't do it immediately in our heads. We would say we start at 3. We are going down 5 steps. Well, let's go down those 5 steps. Well, jumping to 0 is a jump of 3 down. How much more do we need to go down? We need to go 2 more down because in total we wanted to go 5 down. And so we can see that we end at negative Two. Okay, another example. 7 subtract 4. Positive or negative answer? Ah, immediately you should know that's positive. And hopefully, you remember your grade 1 work, 7 subtract 4 is going to give you 3 as the answer. Now, what will happen if we do 4 subtract 7? Firstly, are we going to end up with a positive or negative answer? Hopefully, you can immediately see we're going to end up with a negative answer. And what do we do? We start at 4. We know that we are going to be going down. And we're going to go down 7 steps. So let's jump down those 7 steps. 4 steps gets me to 0. And 3 more steps to make up my total of 7 steps will get me to negative 3. Can you see the pattern that I am seeing here? That if... 7 minus 4 is 3, then 4 minus 7 will be negative 3. And we can write this by saying 4 subtract 7 is going to give me the same answer as 7 subtract 4, except it will be negative. So how does that help me? Well, if I wanted to do something like 43, subtract 68, I know my answer is going to be negative. And I know from that pattern I've just observed that it's just going to give me the same number part of the answer as 68 subtract 43, except be negative. And so 68 subtract 43, I know is 25. And so my answer here is negative 25.